boom, Japan Inc. comes together to accelerate vaccination workout. This is a good, an interesting one, Japan Inc. coming together. So what is this about? This is about, well, a couple of things. The the Japan is, of course, has gotten very slow. I mean, uh, in terms of the vaccination rollout, uh, the percentage of the population vaccinated, uh, Japan is actually worse at vaccinating than it is at gender equality. You know, gender equality, it's only like 120th, whereas vaccinations is like 129th. It might have improved recently. However, it's increasingly clear that people being nervous about the Olympics coming up, of course, and the government, the LDP, has an election right after the Olympics. You, normally, you'd think that would be the perfect timing for an election after an Olympics, but of course, in the circumstance, is not really ideal for them. And it's clear that everyone is extremely upset about how slow the vaccinations were. So, yeah, while they started setting the goals of a million vaccinations a week, which, by the way, they're not up to yet. They're, they're, they're up to about 500,000, but they are doing all the things to try to increase those numbers. I think they realize now that their survival in the next election really depends upon them accelerating the amount of vaccinations a lot. So a few things have happened this week. Uh, aside from the fact that, of course, you have the large self-defense force, the military-run uh, vaccination centers in Osaka and Tokyo, and it uh, looks like they're looking at building more in other prefectures, anyone that asks for them. Uh, the local prefectures have also uh, been setting up their own mass vaccination centers, which look like they're going to come online from late June and uh, early July. In Tokyo, they're talking about using the old fish market in Skiji and other places. This is on top of being able to also use regular hospitals, local practitioners, and even pharmacists now and dentists. So they're trying to increase that. Um, but another thing that's happened is that the government said that uh, although they have to prioritize vaccinating elderly first, if they think that they're going to meet the government goal that 85% of municipalities say that they're going to meet of getting all people vaccinated by the end of July. To the extent they have empty reservation slots and whatnot, the government said, go ahead, you can decide to prioritize other groups like government workers or teachers or first responders or anybody in some cases. There are just small towns where it's just easy to come and do the whole town at once. They've said that from June 21st, they're going to allow uh, local governments to just decide to vaccinate everybody. They're doing another thing on top of that right now, which is uh, the government last week said that if there are companies that have corporate doctors that uh, uh, have the ability to carry out mass vaccinations themselves and lower the pressure uh, you know, on, on local governments, uh, the government will give free vaccines to any company that wants it, that has a means to vaccinate their employees. So now you've got large companies, I believe Rakuten and Sony are the big ones in public. Uh, they have already said, yeah, we'll vaccinate all of our employees. So if you're lucky to work at a company which uh, has contacted the government, and the government says from next week they're going to start handing out vaccines to companies that can do this. Also to universities, by the way, as well. So universities will be able to vaccinate their staff and even their students. Before the end of the month, they'll be able to start doing that. So it suddenly looks like it could really be within a month or two now, which um, would be great. I mean, look, as soon as I can get it, I'm getting it. I'm not, I'm not wasting any time. I do want one of the mRNA ones. You know, I want to improve my 5G reception. <laughs> The ones that are on offer in Japan right now are Moderna and Pfizer, and they have enough of that for everybody. They're sending all the AstraZeneca over to Taiwan. I'm actually quite optimistic, and it's one of the, it's very Japan, right, that they're very slow and indecisive starting up, but they build up momentum really, really fast. And while a lot of people are still upset that it's taken so long until now, and have pointed out people have died while the government has been slow sorting out the uh, distribution mechanism. I mean, Japan does have 127 million people, and it did distribute them right or wrong through the municipalities, of which there are hundreds, you know, thousands even in Japan. So it was always going to take a long time to come together, but the momentum behind it now, and I think the momentum is genuinely because, um, if not that it's in the best interests of the health of the people in the country, it's in the best interests of the government surviving the very soon to come election, where they're getting like smashed in the polls right now. So, you know, one way or another, the message got across. I, I am not as wound up as a lot of people about the speed of it, so long as I see it improving, and I see it improving. So there we go. Why didn't Japanese pharmaceutical companies like Takeda or Daiichi make a COVID vaccine, or the Japanese government giving them funding or incentives? Well, that's one of the things being debated right now. A couple of reasons for that. One is that the culture of Japanese pharmaceutical companies is extremely conservative. Where you have American and European companies that are trying to tr get a patent like into a product to market as soon as possible, if it looks, even smells like it might be have a, have a productive sort of an outcome, Japan is very, very conservative and different to that. They will test 
you know, much, much more. They'll take much longer about it. They'll be willing to have a lot of patents and not commercialize them and rely on a few commercialized products. It's always taken longer. There's also no pressure of competition because, you know, traditionally the Ministry of Health will take longer to authorize uh, foreign medicines and they'll, they've given uh, a buffer to domestic producers to, uh, and this was actually one of the causes of the HIV epidemic in Japan, that, for example, medical equipment that could have tested a blood uh, test, uh, blood donations uh, was blocked by the Ministry of Health in order to, to allow Japanese companies to get the equipment into Japan sooner or to give them more time to develop it. And in that time, lots of people got HIV from contaminated, lots of hemophiliacs in Japan got it and uh, it was avoidable and the Japanese government got sued for it. Although getting sued, it's obviously too late once you've got an incurable you know, disease. So there's a bit of a dark history around this. Not only that, but also the fact that the pharmaceuticals in Japan have a history of being completely non-transparent. So as well as being able and protected to take their time, hospitals have run drug trials with cooperating with pharmaceutical companies without informed consent from patients that have been fatal. So uh, also because of those scandals, that's reinforced the double safety culture, the, the response to the, the complete lack of safety that existed really until the 1990s in Japan. Takeda, from what I understand, I think they have a tie-up with AstraZeneca. And the idea was that uh, they will, the, there was a plan that they would produce AstraZeneca within Japan. However, you know, because of all the news coming out of Europe, which I still doesn't, if it was the only choice, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But uh, yeah, in terms of why they didn't develop it fast enough themselves, uh, well, that's that's something that the government itself is also asking the question and what they can do to make sure that Japan isn't so dependent in future on, on overseas vaccines. But clearly it's got a lot to do with speed. I think also when you read about how the mRNA vaccines in particular were developed and how they leveraged, you know, cl cloud and uh, machine learning to be able to accelerate the development cycle from a normal four or five years to a few months. Using technology, they're much more aggressive generally. They're much less risk averse generally. So I think there's cultural, regulatory uh, and technology, frankly, reasons for it. It's one of the focuses that the LDP is asking. There has always been funding for, for domestic vaccines. In fact, there's been a bunch of protection for it. But the fact that Japan's ended up in the situation where it sort of is at the mercy of supply of other com countries, including approvals from Europe to be able to uh, import vaccines from Europe. Yeah, that said, of the countries that don't produce it, that have needed to buy it from America and Europe, Japan has done a pretty good job of getting to the front of the queue. I mean, even the other developed countries and the rich countries that can afford to buy it before developing countries can, like Australia and New Zealand and Taiwan and so on, you know, they've struggled a lot. So Japan is doing not not awfully. You know, South Korea is doing much better. Other countries are doing much better. So, uh, Shrip it, good to see you here. The Sputnik va vaccine wasn't bad. Russia isn't that far away from Japan. Indeed, I've heard good things about that vaccine. I mean, again, it shows that Russia, you know, for all of its problems, which are more than a few, it still has a lot of very, very smart people. And, they, you know, they're, they're, they've been remarkable for that. Maybe Japan needs to go hire those those Russian vaccine makers. I mean, that's there are worse things. Uh, next story is the EU has started with uh, digital COVID uh, well, vaccination passports. Traveling within Europe, you're going to basically soon be able to show, there's going to be a digital pass, I believe, something you can show on your phone, uh, which will be required uh, for some border crossings and whatnot for travel, basically, to show that you've been vaccinated. This is something I know that Japan Airlines and I think ANA as well have started looking into as well. It's I think it's going to be very easy to see in a few months that a lot of the releasing from lockdown in a lot of countries is going to be dependent on having a kind of a digital proof that you've been vaccinated. I know a lot of people are concerned that this uh, is coercing people into getting vaccinations, you know, who might not want them, like forced shots, or particularly involving new technology that people don't know all the side effects and so on. And I kind of get that, but again, I'm, I don't really have much time for people who are against this sort of thing. A lot of universities in, uh, all over the world require people have their shots in order to go attend university. When I was a kid and I lived in Singapore, it was required for me to have malaria shots before I went to Singapore. Vaccinations are mandatory in New Zealand. They're not mandatory in Japan for kids, but they're pretty much everyone that can get them gets them. So... Yeah, I don't think it's it's no more a violation of rights. I mean, to me, when I again, when I grew up, it, the only people who objected to having like polio or mumps shots or anything like that were pretty much like Jehovah's Witnesses or people with really strong sort of religious things against it. Whereas lately, it's kind of morphed into this weird conspiracy theory, ultra libertarian kind of a thing uh, and mistrust of government thing, which really is what's going to take the world back into the dark ages. So what I like most about the idea 
of these digital passports and you're not basically prohibiting travel and access to a lot of public facilities uh, if you don't have a if you're not vaccinated is it means i'm not going to have to sit next to these fruit loops uh, if next time i'm sitting on an airplane sure if you don't want your shot don't take it but but don't bother me on an airplane about it uh, i've been doing this all my life with other shots and i can't wait to get my shot personally this i think this is a good thing uh, and you know well, I think it's irresponsible not to get the shot. I mean, unless you have a good medical reason for not getting it. There's a question of fairness for those people who have good medical reasons for it. But there again, yeah, get a, get a doctor's certificate or something like that. But if it purely is uh, just that you don't want to do it, fine. But there should be a cost on that because, you know, you are choosing selfishly to, to endanger public safety uh, by not getting the shot. You make the choice, but uh, un understand that you won't be entitled to the same freedoms as others. And I know that some people see that as a new world order type of a move but tough right that's that's kind of where i am on it so i think this is a good move myself yeah uh, christopher luke how far am i down the line for a vaccine well like i was just saying in the first story here now companies are starting to do it and the government from like the 21st of june is going to allow different local governments to give uh shots early to people under 65 if they you know for example have free spots in the reservations and whatnot a lot of tokyo wards by the way have already announced that they are going to use that right away not the one where i live unfortunately but we'll see how that goes i am optimistic that maybe within two or three months i will be able to do that i think between the different options that are coming up with the with the, the self-defense force center in Otimachi, the the mass vaccination sites that the Tokyo government is setting up, my own local ward and all the options I, I, I have here, as well as possibly being able to get a shot at work. I'm hoping that happens. I normally get flu shots at work. So I think I'm going to have a lot of options probably come July or August. I'm hoping I can get it, but I don't have a number for that right now. Uh, and Mig Zivim, I uh, do not agree. You don't have to agree either. I realize a lot of people who feel the opposite of this have strong opinions, but there again, I feel like the the view in favor of digital passports uh, should also be put strongly. Uh, I, I I feel like the vocal minor, minority on this are the, are the ones that really want to um, that are against it. Um, and I I, I I personally, I've been with this all my life, and I I think it's a good idea. So that's just me anyway. I'm perf perfectly uh, happy to have people disagree with me. In fact, I have friends. I don't unfriend people on Facebook. Uh, I have good friends who are actually opposed to my opinion about digital passports. Uh, or vaccine passports but but me uh, i think it's a good idea that's just me and uh yeah i must admit i was also stunned a little bit at the speed oh the thing about japan i'm a, li a little less worried about the safety now because now all the countries that rushed you know america and israel and those countries we now have all this data including now data a few months down the road from them all being vaccinated it's, i guess it's the, that's the upside to being a little bit slower in japan um, and yeah, yeah, everything I can see says that I'm, I'm, I'm totally uh, looking forward to my shot and my improved reception. So yeah, the, the final one I've got here is that apparently, well, in Osaka, the mass vaccination center can take 5,000 vaccinations a day. The, the military one, the self-defense force one, the Tokyo one can take 10,000 reservations a day, but they're not filling them up. And this is what I've been saying as well. If they're not filling it up, let, let me go. I'll go down there and take one of the, the the empty spots that the elderly didn't take. The government's been asking, is this vaccine hesitancy? Is this uh, anti-vaxxers? Are these elderly? Why are they not taking the free vaccinations in Otomachi? Of course, Tokyo is enormous and uh, Otomachi is wonderfully located centrally. It's well connected, but, but it's not close to any residential district. So for anyone going from anywhere in Tokyo, while it's very central, which is good, you know, you still have to go out you, when you're having only elderly being eligible for the shots. Most would still prefer to do it locally. So some people are saying that, no, it's too far away. Um, they'll just do it locally. They won't worry about going to Otemachi, which has caused the government to thankfully to pivot and say that, OK, well, from the end of this month, they're going to start allowing um, younger people to take the open slot, actually, and, and particularly emergency workers and whatnot to take the uh, open slots, which I think is a good move. But um, yeah, interesting. It hasn't taken off as much. Uh,